Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel. On our channel, we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I am Cherry Lynn, and I'm here with my mom, Dixie, and Lynn Forsyth. Hi. Hi. So we are attacking quite a juicy topic today. We are talking about the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial. We have never, ever covered anything like this. We've had tons of ladies message us asking us to cover this. We want to talk a little bit about the trial. We're going to get into some things, but before we get into the juicy (laughs) details, why are we covering this topic, mom? That's really what prompted it is because we had so many ladies asking us our take on it. Our first reaction was, Ugh. Yeah, we were like, we don't <laughs> no. want to go there. This is a case of fascinating womanhood principles that were misused. And the advantage for us in discussing a little bit of it is to help anyone out there who might not understand how using some of these principles for selfish purposes, how it can backfire on yeah. you. Because some women have a natural talent for being feminine and attracting men. And it's, it's actually, you know, it's showing the power of femininity. Everyone is angry with her. Feminists are angry with her people that are more in our, on our team, like pro feminine women that we're mad at her too. Everybody is frustrated, men, women, everybody's frustrated, no matter what group you fall into. We just kept saying to ourselves, why this is not all her fault. Nobody's on her side. It seems like, seems like nobody's on her side and everyone is on Johnny Depp's side. And we just want to discuss that. Okay. We got to be really upfront about this. When we were asked to do this, both of us were kind of like, I don't know much about it. I haven't been following it that closely. So we had to kind of get into it. My initial reaction, I just felt sorry for both of them being in that situation because who wants to be in a court with everybody looking at your personal life? Not me. So So before we start, how did we get this list? We posed the question on our Instagram page and we asked our viewers, why do you think so many people are team heard and not team depth? And we got an overwhelming amount of responses. Some of them were private. A lot of them were private message to us. We won't show anyone's names, of course, but we're going to show on the screen here all of these responses that we got, especially the ones that relate to our list. And we looked at these responses and we made a list based on the responses from the ladies that follow us. So again, this was just on Instagram. We could have done it on YouTube. We kind of didn't really know how much interest we would get. So we just started this one video based off of that one post we put on Instagram. So we obviously had a lot of interest there. So we're, we're interested to see how you all, our, our YouTube audience is going to respond to this. So here we go. No particular order. The 10 things that we compiled from our audience that make everyone not like her. Seems like they just don't like her. The first one is probably the most obvious one. Now this is a legend. We're not calling Amber Heard a liar. We're just, well, some of it's fact. (laughs) Well, yes, because she did did. did lie in court. And then she later said, well, Yeah. yeah, that was, you were right. That was, yeah. She's admitted to lying. She's been caught in lying. This isn't us trashing someone and starting rumors about her being a liar. She is in fact a liar and she lied about multiple things. She's lied about infidelity. That's kind of a fact and kind of a legend. She definitely lied about the charity money. And for those of you that don't know all these details, this video isn't going to go into all those details. (laughs) We're just commenting. Hopefully you're following the trial. If you're not, there's millions of options out there to look up and do your own research. But she promised and she actually said on TV that she donated millions of dollars to this charity. And then she actually admitted to not doing it. That's just as real. It's that people don't like liars and she's caught in a lie. She also lied. This one is the one that really got to me. She lied about her dogs and she <laughs> smuggled them into Australia and she got out of a 10 year prison sentence for doing that. And she tried to blame it on her assistants. She tried to blame it on everybody else. And she ended up getting caught. Like it's, I think she's being investigated now for perjury. She was definitely caught lying about her dogs. She's questionable when she's saying things, you question her because she's lied about other things. The public, which is all of us do not like being lied to. And if you have once believed something that someone says, and then you find out it's not true, you feel like you've been used and no one likes yeah. that. I don't know that Johnny has been caught lying. I, I, I don't think he has. I feel like he's been pretty upfront about things. I don't, I think there's been some misunderstandings with him, but he has not been caught in any lies. And so the public obviously 
comparing the two of them, they're going to side with him because they know she's lying. Number two, as she appears to be out to ruin Johnny's career. We received a lot of comments about this was a big one. People were really upset that she appears to be ruining his career. Why do you think everyone thinks that? Well, because the divorce was final in 2017. And after it was final, and after they issued a joint statement saying that then they were fine and all of that, that kind of polite stuff. It was after that, she came out with an op-ed and after the divorce saying how she was such an abuse victim. And after that, he was dropped at least two contracts I know that were big. And he couldn't, he couldn't get, he couldn't get a part in Hollywood. There's a ton of speculation because she didn't use his name in the op-ed. There's a ton of speculation on that one. All I know is that his contracts got dropped. And so everybody believed it was him. Yeah. Whether she used his name or not, that was before I ever heard, most of us ever heard that there was any acrimony going on between them that she had done. I didn't know about any op-ed. I didn't follow any of that. All I knew is when this, he uh, announced he was suing her. Well, the other part of this, her out to ruin him, if you really do pay attention to the story on the internet, she sought a restraining order from him within the same week she was filing divorce. And in that week that she filed for a divorce and a restraining order, he was in Europe. And it just seems odd to me that she would file. I don't know if you've ever, I mean, I know I've known people that have had been in domestic situations and I know that those people would not probably file a restraining order when that person is in another country for an extended amount of time. doesn't really make any sense. And she appeared in the courthouse the day she filed for that restraining order. She, she went through the main door and she was sporting a giant bruise that mysteriously was not there when she was photographed the next day. That is purely trying to smear him. By showing up the main door, they have doors for celebrities at the courthouse. You can go in an underground entrance to, to protect your image and whatever's going on with you. She chose to go into that courtroom and she came out with the restraining order in her hand for with the paparazzi everywhere. I don't know. To me, that seems like I'm trying to, I want everyone to know that I'm a victim. Oh. Most victims don't want all their business to be spread out like that. Number three, she represents toxic femininity. Which I have to say, I, I don't really believe people say that. And that's why we put that, yeah. but I don't really believe in toxic femini femininity or masculinity is simply bad behavior. Toxic and femininity is not, not those two words do not mix. Um, why do you think she, people think that? Uh, it divides, it divides this, uh, not divide. It makes more acrimony or, um, uh, anxiety, or anger between the sexes, lack of trust. It promotes lack of trust between the sexes. And it's like toxic masculinity. You start thinking men equals toxic. And, and so they're using it. They never used to use it. And in all this age of men are awful or men saying women are awful, they put those names on it. And I think it just makes more distrust between the sexes. I agree with you. I think we received comments, multiple comments saying that she was evil or she's a villain, referring to her as those specific names. And I think when I think of evil or villain, I just think of what you just said, someone that's demonstrating really poor choices and bad behaviors. Could be anyone. Could be anyone, anyone, no matter what, what the sex. It, that has also to do with like, when we're talking about poor choices and like, why do people see her as a villain and evil? Her, her assistant, her former assistant testified that she was verbally abusive. This is a fact. This isn't, you know, this is all out there on for us to see. And she spit on her. Well, her. She was also arrested for assaulting her former partner. Yeah. Okay. Um, number four. She's making a mockery of the Me Too movement. And now people are calling it the Me Poo movement. Because <laughs> she did. That was there's photos of it all over the internet. People that tried to bring some of this abuse out that women have suffered, are they going to be less believed? Well, the Me Too movement has a really great side to it and an awful kind of deeply evil side to it. And it feels as though she is dipping in both pools. She came in from a very dysfunctional family and she's obviously had a dysfunctional marriage with Johnny. So she's kind of dipping in both sides of it. She obviously is a victim, but she's taking it way too far and trying to take advantage of that. And I think that's perhaps why she may have written that op-ed because it came out or in the beginning of Me Too. Some women do try to take advantage to get back at people. And then that hurts other women who really have suffered that. So it's all a matter of character, really. I mean, that movement is meant to help women. 
and to yes. stop some of, some of the bad behavior towards them. Well, some of that you mentioned me poo and like people are making all these funny references because of the poo thing that she did in the bed. She pooped in Johnny's bed. But there's also another hashtag coming out of this, which is men too. And I don't think she realizes that it's um, ha- men too, meaning men can be victims of dysfunctional relationships. I actually have, I actually know some in my life. I've seen it. And usually those men, uh, it's too humiliating for them to really say because it makes you feel weak, but men can be. Number five. She has no class. And what we mean by that is that she, her character is just so shredded. It's just this shredded apart character. It's what we're observing on, as she's in court and some of the choices she's making. She just appears to be very shallow and appears to be very super superficial and kind of a gold digger. Like the whole thing with the charity money and she didn't donate uh-huh, it. Uh-huh. I know she was kind of famous for a lot of people testifying about her always being after money and p- paying her staff poorly and her and her constant swearing or potty mouth. Uh, potty mouth is definitely not a feminine characteristic. Then there's also number six, which you can see how that annoys people. You know, we've had a number of women who have legitimately been hurt, who said that it infuriates them because she doesn't show the signs who yeah, has she, been she doesn't fit the profile for a victim most women are calling her out that have actually in fact gone through this and had to get help they're calling her out on her and saying you do not fit that profile it does not make sense to have affairs right in front of your husband who is you're afraid of you, who you think is dangerous who you think is dangerous it doesn't make sense she they, some of her actions just don't fit the profile of a woman who is afraid of their husband um many people private messaged us about that because they didn't want it to be you know they didn't want to submit a, a, a comment for anyone to see they wanted a private message just to say, like hey i just want to share my story that i went came from a, a really dysfunctional relationship and i got out and I'm watching Amber Heard and I, she just does not fit that. It does not even make sense. Some of the things that she's done. And unfortunately she's kind of becoming this poster child. She's not really a victim. Which I'm sure she didn't mean that wasn't her goal in doing this, but she's hurting people who really have been hurt. Yeah. And are are trying to find a way to, to deal with that. So, and this, this next one, we kind of noticed that I haven't seen so much as out there is she is unknown compared to him. He has been around for decades. He's a beloved actor. He's been in a lot of beloved roles. Some people just love that character and they think of him as that character. And so they think of him as someone that they know because he's been in their lives sometimes since they were, they were kids and, and, and she's an almost unknown by comparison. So they don't know, they don't have a beloved memory of her as a, as a character. This point number seven about her being not as loved, this is the part where I start to have more sympathy for her. And I feel like it's not really being, it's not fair. I mean, nothing's fair, but people are being a little, maybe perhaps a little hard on her because she's easy to be angry with because of her choices. But Johnny has it a little bit better than she does because of being more well-known and being more beloved. And, And I am glad that some of our comments came through about that because it's true. She isn't as known. I didn't know who she was until this trial. And so it's like, you're looking at her and you're going, who's this lady? And then you see her and she kind of appears to be this mess. You haven't seen any of the good sides or there's good sides to everyone. We haven't seen any of the good side of her. We don't know much about her. All we know is all this junk that's coming out about her. And with Johnny, you don't want to believe. And you see him in the courtroom and he handles himself really well. He is rather eloquent in how he presents his side and he's calm and she is not. So you, you add those things together and you think, oh, this is Johnny. We just love Johnny. You know, <laughs> He has so many friends that have testified to his, how he's not a violent person. Even his ex-wife said he was not ever like that. And so Very he has incredible. tons of friends. Very credible friends. He has credible past girlfriends that are coming out. And this fame thing that he's got this great image that he had is kind of protecting him in a way. And that's, that's not that that's sad that it's sad that she doesn't, if they were both, I think someone made a comment on one of the YouTube threads of a video I was watching said, if these two people were unknown and lived in a trailer park, no one would care about this. Who knows? No, and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be for 50 and a hundred million dollars either. 
No, no, <laughs> it's true. That's another part of it is the money. Well, yeah. This thing, this, this kind of thing goes on all the time, but it's not for that amount of money. The next one is okay. number eight. I'm sorry, but that's one everybody seems to have seen the the sobbing with no tears. All of us have seen movies with actors and actresses that are playing a part that they know is a part, memorize lines, and they actually weep. So, and I don't know how they do that because I could not do that, but she's an actress and can't, and can't seem to call up tears even when it's her real life. I know. So. So strange. And I, I, again, we were asked to do this video by multiple people. And so I started looking and I, I mean, my face, I, I don't know what my face looked like, but I was watching her testimony and I was kind of like, I just couldn't believe that she was acting so strangely. And I know she, you know, was probably nervous to get up there, but still like, it's just so odd, her behavior on the stand, you know, doing drugs. Starting call. It, I just, what just happened? I, I don't know. She's disingenuous. She doesn't seem like she is genuinely hurt and she doesn't really take responsibility for any of her part in this obviously toxic relationship that the two of them had. The, her overall body language, if you watch some of the body language videos on her out there on YouTube, you'll see like just some of the strange kind of aggressive body language that she has makes her appear to be a little bit disingenuous. Yeah. Also, uh, sometimes in her recounting of things, she has, when she's supposed to have been traumatized, she has odd details that people usually don't have. I was just sitting there on this, on, on this, carpet looking at the dirty carpet wondering how i wound up on this carpet and why i was never why i never noticed that the carpet was so filthy before and i just didn't know what else to do i didn't know what to say i didn't know how to react well she talks about her head being pressed in face into the carpet and how dirty the carpet was and i thought she wouldn't be thinking about focused the on the soil and the carpet at such a time uh, anyway it's really strange yeah um number nine she is beautiful and talented and she appears to have just thrown her her the good things in her life away this one's really sad this again makes me have some more sympathy for her because she did come from a a rather dysfunctional upbringing and it's sad but she also has a lot of talent and she's really really beautiful and she's had some pretty pretty good movie roles and good opportunities and just feels like she's thrown it away with some of these choices and the drugs and why 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 yeah i i don't know I, so, some people have said she doesn't look as beautiful as she does when she's acting and i thought well she has professional makeup artists then i mean she had professional people making her up so i don't know that she's less beautiful than she was it feels like for the actual trial she is downplaying her looks i don't I have no idea why that's and this is just my opinion i just have noticed that she has not really stayed true to her style that i've seen prior to the trial she's kind of like tried to appear a little bit more I don't professional know. i don't know well it's not necessarily professional she just doesn't i feel like a lot of women when they go on trial like this they kind of change their style a little bit perhaps just for the court it's like they don't know what their court style is so they just end up kind of either going more frumpy or going more serious, or I don't know, maybe they want the jury to see them differently, but that's probably perhaps why people might think that. I don't know. I don't know, but I just think she's a really beautiful, very beautiful woman. Just, I mean, I can't imagine how many women out there would like to look like her and not even look like her, but just some of the opportunities and talents she's had. I mean, so many people, you know, people that are trying to act and get bigger roles in Hollywood. You've known, you've had friends that have been in that, in that world. It's hard to get, it's really tough to get roles and she's gotten some big roles. I don't know how she's gotten them, but however she's gotten them, she's gotten them. She's had some opportunity to make something of her life. I don't even know whether it's one in a thousand who aspires to be in any big films there actually makes it. I don't know what the statistics are, but it's bad. It's like the music yeah. business. There's people who are angry with her for getting these opportunities and then just messing it all up. Right. And then the last one, the fact that she is dragging so many people into this defamation. She's dragging so many people's lives, private lives, including Johnny Depp's ex-wife, his ex-girlfriends, her child. She has a little baby at home, like a one-year-old baby at home. That his is children. Her, his children, their assistants, their former staff. Like there's just so many people that are getting involved in this. Well, his yeah. siblings, his, I know his sister's like, been on the stand. Her dad is in, in on now, now there's all these rumors about her dad and how awful he was. Now his life is exposed. This is all to do with this, this 
suit. And I know that Johnny is part of that too. He is part of that because he's suing her, but it's like, who started it? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like he felt like he didn't know what he had to do to get his life back. And it's sad. It brought in another person from his past that wasn't supposed to be brought in, wasn't on the witness list. She brought in another person by telling some outrageous story. Now that person has to potentially come in and testify and have her dirty laundry aired. And it's just, I think that infuriates people to see that. Uh, and some attorneys, uh, some attorneys I've heard out there blame her attorneys. So they're the worst. They should have coached her on what the absolute, like it, do not bring this up or say this, or I quit. And so that has caused more problems. So, but yeah. the whole thing is a lot of people did not know. They thought this was a divorce suit. This, their divorce was been right. over for several years. This is about what she did after it was all settled. Right. Yeah. And a lot of the comments that we, we received about this were people feeling sympathy for everyone being hurt around them. And, and that's true. And this is true of any divorce. What you said about how this started with everyone thought this was divorce, but it's actually not. Yeah. That's what the op-ed, she didn't need to write it. No, no. And one, one Hollywood expert said that the op-ed she wrote for, was it the Washington Post? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That they, they know that that's directly connected to Hollywood, which is new to me. I don't know anything about that, but they said that she knew that Hollywood would read this and they would react by pulling his contracts. Yeah. So whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's why on our channel, we caution everybody do not recommend to somebody on that. You don't know on the thread. If they post a problem, don't tell them to get a divorce. Divorce is extremely personal. It's very expensive and people are hurt all around it. Now, this is a big a big thing it's blown up in the press and so it's hurting even more people but no matter who it is divorce is not something you do lightly yeah. just you know our whole point in this is not to do something that's salacious or anything like that what my thought is when when we talked about doing this is is helping ladies out there understand how because we say it all the time in fascinating womanhood don't use these principles in a disingenuous way because it will come back to hurt you in the end. You might feel like you're succeeding at first, but it doesn't have good long-term results. Yeah. Just like with uh, Amber, I don't think she could have married Johnny Depp if she didn't, if she didn't have some fascinating womanhood understanding of some of the principles, femininity, charm, yeah, some of those kind of things. Well, and he made a famous statement. I, I can't remember where it was. I think it was on, a, on the, the witness stand when he was giving his testimony. He said that she, he basically explained and described their relationship in the beginning was just like kind of magical. He met a soulmate. She was so wonderful. And then over time, she became another person. And this get, kind of goes off into another subject, but it kind of reminds me of what you're just saying is she basically used femininity and charm as a tool to capture him. She didn't use it in a genuine way because it's who she really is. She knows the power of being feminine and charming. And she used that to kind of catch him. And then once she caught him, she went back to who she really is. And that's what I think you're saying here. And of, of course, we can prove you. any of that, but like, that's just kind of what we're seeing and kind of mm -hmm. our take and our opinion on it. And, and it's a shame. Fascinating womanhood is meant to be who you are. And we get some ladies that say, I tried it. It didn't work. It's not yeah, a technique. Yeah. It, these are a set of principles. These are not techniques that you use. Or some will say, when do I use it for this? Or do I, I don't use it at work. It isn't something you use. It's something that you are. Yeah. And that's the whole purpose of why we're here. So that's our list for today. If you would like us to get dig deeper into Amber and talk a little bit more about fascinating womanhood principles specifically with her, let us know. If you're completely tired of this topic and you don't want any more of it, that's fine too. We just wanted to see what you all are thinking. And thank you all so much. We did submit all these comments for today's video. It really helped us to be able to get a good perspective on what's going on out there. And the trial isn't over. So we don't know. Yeah, we can do a follow-up depending on what the outcome is of the next few weeks just let us know what you want us to do and we will we will dig into it a little bit more thank you so much for being here with us today mom and explaining all of this and for those of you that don't that are new to fascinating womanhood you don't know a lot about us we have a ton of best-selling books and workbooks that you can see attached to this video all the places that you can find them are linked below just definitely check those out we're here every week so we would love it if you would join us and subscribe to our channel and be with us every week when we release our videos and we will see you next time bye see you next time bye